All right, well, let's take a look at division with mixed numbers. This is actually the most complicated of the operations because, no surprise, division is the most complicated of our elementary operations. So again, the idea that we might work with is that we can, if we want to, convert our mixed numbers into improper fractions. So again, the check we might make, the numbers here are fairly small, so it might be worth trying to do that. So let's see, 3 and a third is 3 times 3 plus 1, 10 thirds. 1 times 8 plus 3, 11 eighths, and that is now a fraction divided by another fraction. And so we have a nice algorithm that says if you're going to do that, invert and multiply. And I can multiply two fractions, no problem, 80 over 33. And again, I want to give my final answer the same dialect that I gave the question in. So the question, mixed numbers, so when I give the final answer, I should also express it as a mixed number. So this reduces 2 and 14 30 thirds. And again, the numbers involved, 10, 8, 3, and 11, aren't too big. Uh, 80 over 33, not too difficult to work with. So it seems reasonable to use the method of converting to improper fractions for this problem. However, every problem is not a nail. Suppose I take something like this, 47 and 2 thirds divided by 7 and 5 eighths. And if I were to convert these to improper fractions, 47 and 2 thirds, 143 thirds, 7 and 5 eighths, 61 eighths, I have two fractions, invert and multiply, and I end up with a horrible mess at the end of the day that I really don't want to have to deal with. So is there another way that I can do this? And again, the thing to keep in mind, every method that we have of doing a division can can be applied to this division. And even though it's not our favorite method to use, we might consider using long division as long as we remember what we're actually doing when we do that long division. So again, we'll rewrite our mixed number as a whole number plus a fraction. And we can start in almost the same way that we do a standard long division problem. 7 goes into 47. I don't know how many times. How about 6? So I'll write my dividend. And I'm going to subtract 6 sevens and also 6 five eighths. So I'm going to multiply. 6 by 7 is 42. 6 by 5 eighths is 30 over 8. And no reason to make our life difficult. 30 over 8 can be pretty quickly reduced to a whole number plus a leftover. That's 3 plus 6 eighths. And again, I can reduce this to 3 quarters. This is 45. So that product gives me 45 and 3 quarters. Now I need to do the subtraction. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to subtract this amount, and how do you do the subtraction? Well, again, any method that you want to use, I feel like doing counting up because I think that's going to be the easiest. So if I start at 45 and 3 quarters and count up to this, I first go up by a quarter, that takes me to 46, one more to take me to 47, two-thirds more to take me to 47 and two-thirds. And I'll go ahead and add these fractional parts because I can. It's not too difficult. 1 plus 11 twelfths. And the thing that's worth noting at this point, the remainder is less than the divisor. And so I can express the quotient as 6 and the compound fraction remainder over divisor. So there's my remainder, that amount. Now, I don't want to leave the answer in that form. That's going to be pretty horrible. And so let's see what we can do about this. One way we can get rid of compound fractions is if we multiply by a common multiple of the two denominators here, that would be 12 and the 8, we can clear all of our fractions at the same time. So let's multiply by 24. So that's going to be give us this. Again, multiplying by the same term gives us an equivalent fraction. And that gives us 24 168, 24 times 11 twelfths, 22, 24 times 5 eighths is 15. Add those things together, that's 46 180 thirds. Remember, that's the remainder. So our actual quotient is going to be 6 and 46 180 thirds, 6 and 46 180 thirds.